Grace, mercy, and peace be on you from God, our Father, the Lord, and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus truly is the way maker, the one who heals us. He comes to us. We get to hear about that today as well as we hear about the lame man in the pool of Bethesda. And in that, we, we hear about a little bit about Bethesda. Okay, hang on a second. We have this pool, and in there's a bunch of cloudy, so a lot of, of, you know, overhangs. And it's believed that when the water stirs in that pool, the angels are the ones who stir it, and those who are in the water would be healed. So we have a large number of individuals who need to be healed, people who may be blind or lame or paralyzed or, or deaf or mute. And when the water would get stirred up, they would get in that water and they would be healed. But we have a man who has been uh, paralyzed for about 38 years. And this man comes up to him and says, do you want to be healed? And the guy says, well, yeah, duh. I want to be healed. But every time I go, the water gets stirred up. I want nobody's there to carry me into the water. And by the time I get there, somebody else has already stepped over me and has gotten in the water. Well, this man who we know is Jesus says, get up, take your mat, and walk. By Jesus' simple words, he tells the man, he heals him, to, and tells him to get up, grab your stuff, and get out of here. My words. How often do we ourselves... Are we like that man? How often are we the ones who are there, sitting there by the water, waiting to be healed, waiting for our stuff to be fixed, and it doesn't happen because we are waiting on somebody else. We're relying on somebody else to take care of us. Think about it. How many self-help books are out there? A lot. Go to any bookstore and there's just, the shelves are full of them. So we read about other people, other people's advice on how to help us. Or maybe we watch Dr. Phil because he's the best one on TV at 2 o'clock on CBS. I'm not sure that's what he's on, but. <coughs> it's too soon, I'm flipping my back. But we go and we, we rely on other people to help us out because we can't do it ourselves. So we take a look at other people and we kind of blame them if we can't get better. Because our life is the way it is because of what other people have done. Maybe it's those who have, well, if so-and-so would have hit the ball harder at the baseball game, we would have won. Or maybe they would have slid instead of running straight to the base, we would have won. Or if the person wasn't a ball hog in basketball, we would have won. Maybe in hockey, if somebody were to skate better, if they would just learn how to skate backwards or forward or use their back check hand, back hand, whatever it is, or they didn't have a hole in their glove as a goalie, it would have been better. Or maybe even if <clears throat> at work, if my coworker would have gotten their work done in a more timely manner, Maybe we would have gotten our project done. Maybe we would have gotten that raise. I would have gotten that raise. How often do we blame other people for our problems? When we can't do it ourselves. Or maybe when we go a little bit step further, we now it's not them, but we look at ourselves at this. I'm going to grab a drink of water. And as we do this, we start to put things on ourselves. Things like I'm not good enough. Somebody told us that we're not good enough. Or even words like I hate you. Or why don't you just dot, dot, dot. Or even if only I did this. 
Well, if only I did that. It starts to internalize on us. We start to believe it. And in that then, we start to go down and down and down and down. And we start to believe it. And then we have nowhere to go. Those are the works of Satan. Those are the works of sin. Where we hear those things, we start to believe them, then we have no hope. And then we start to get things like depression or anxiety, and it takes us over. It overcomes us. And then we don't want to get help. We can't get help. And then we sit by the pool of water. But I want you to know that we have someone who says, do you want to be healed? Get up, grab your mat, and go. That person who wants us to be healed is Jesus Christ himself as he comes to us in our deeps and down depths of despair. When we ourselves don't think we can do anything on our own or when we're down and we've got all these words that I can't and I don't and why don't you and all those things and they overcome us. Jesus says, I love you. Jesus says, do you want to be healed? Get up, grab your mat, grab your stuff, and let's go. You see, we too are by that pool of water. And in that, we are reminded of every single day when you come to church. Every single day you see a baptism, the water heals you. In our baptism, we were washed clean. We were made new in the water. As we ourselves are, are with, marked with the sign of the cross upon our forehead and upon our heart. And every single time we see a baptism, we are reminded of our promise, our free gift to all who will hear it. A free gift that Jesus loves you. And you're washed clean. You are made new in the water. Just as that man, just as those people were walking in that water and they get in that water that's being stirred up by the angels and they were healed, we too are healed in the water of baptism. It's a free gift given to you. And in that then we have faith. Next week we celebrate Pentecost when we will hear about the, the transformation of thousands. When the Spirit comes upon thousands and thousands of hearers as Peter's up there proclaiming that Jesus Christ is Lord and King. He says, repent and be baptized. Go the other way. Repent is to go the other way in the about face. Change what you're doing and be baptized and believe. Listen to the Holy Spirit as he comes to you in worship, as he comes to you as you read your Bible in prayer and believe. You know, I talked about how we rely on other people. You know, who are you relying on? Well, you get to help others as well. It's not that we look to them to heal us, but they can walk alongside us. Each one of you walks, along, walks, walks alongside someone else in their journey. Maybe you're the one that's being walked along with. But you play a role in this. And we are reminded every single day when we see water, when we get up and we shower, we are washed clean, we are made new. It's a new creation. And the neat thing is, is in the book of Revelation, as, as John is telling us about what he sees about the end times, Jesus tells us in Revelation 21, verse 5, that behold, I am making all things new. We are made new in Christ in our baptism, but... In the end, he makes everything new. 
as we heard about in the epistle lesson, where they saw the kingdom of Jerusalem coming down in gold and diamonds and brightness. There's no need for sun or moon because God lights up all things. And he comes to us. Jesus comes to us every single day. He's right here in our presence. He's right here with you. He tells you to get up, grab your stuff, and go. You are healed. You are healed in the blood of Christ. Your sin is no more. Go and do. Amen. Amen.